You're welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. Um, we now have our guest, the public affairs analyst, Mr. Nick Agule, joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. All right. This morning, us. we're talking about the price of cooking gas in Nigeria. It's risen in the past few months. And um, reading a few articles online, the news, and the one you've personally noted yourself, we can see the impact of gas flaring and importation in all of this. Um, please let's have your commentary on the rise of cooking gas in the country. Uh, thank you very much for that question. I have worked in the oil industry for 25 years, mostly for international oil and gas companies, part of that in Nigeria. And I never in my imagination thought that Nigeria was importing gas. I, maybe I didn't give a thought to it. Maybe I thought it was an impossibility. I probably was living in denial, or I was just dreaming that this was not going to be because Nigeria is producing and flaring gas. So I thought that all of the gas that is being used in Nigeria is actually from our oil wells in the Niger Delta. And so like you really said, this news now broke to say that uh, Nigeria is importing gas and Hitato, the Federal Inland Revenue Service, was not levying VAT, that's value added tax, on the imported gas. But then they changed their minds and decided to apply VAT on the imported gas. And because of that, the price of cooking gas almost doubled in the market since I became aware that Nigeria is importing gas. I have not been myself. I have not been myself because I can understand the story with petrol. We at least sell crude oil, make money before we import petrol. But in gas, we are actually flaring what we are producing reducing it to zero value. And then we'll look for money elsewhere to go and import a commodity that we have been blessed with, that we have taken our pains to produce, and then flaring. It doesn't make sense at all. Nick Agule, wh why, think, why is Nigeria... Yeah, why is Nigeria flaring gas? Okay, so uh, let me just take a step back and and just say this in a layman's way. When you drill an oil well, you always get three things come out of that well. You will get oil, you will get gas, and you will get water. Collectively, these three things are called hydrocarbons. That's the word hydrocarbons. Now, in Nigeria's situation, the oil companies drill for oil. <clears throat> and when these three things come out, they dispose of the water after treating it, they take the oil and sell, and then for reasons that are best known to them, they flare the gas as if gas has no use. Meanwhile, as we speak today, gas is the biggest source of electricity generation the world over. And now you have a country that is taking pains, money, sticking in technology to produce this commodity that should be used for electricity generation. And they set this commodity on fire. Meanwhile, the country is largely in darkness. Nigeria is one of the countries that is the most unelectrified in the whole world. So if you ask me why are these oil companies flaring gas, I will simply tell you I don't know. Because 
they could harness that gas, and indeed they do harness the gas. If you ask the oil companies, because that's the sector I worked in, they harness part of the gas. What do they use it for? They use part of the gas they harness to generate electricity for their own oil installations. So if you go to the Niger Delta where you have the oil installations, the electricity that they are using is not from the public power supply. It is the gas that they are producing that they use for that. They also use that gas for what we call gas lift, which is they re-inject the gas into the well to bring out more oil. So they, they make use of the gas that for, for their own benefit. But for some inexplicable reasons, they flare the gas that they could have harnessed into electricity, into cooking gas, and into other uses. But I lay the blame. I lay the blame for this squarely on the feet of the government. And the government of Nigeria is being led, as I speak today, by President Muhammadu Buhari. There is no government in the world that will allow this kind of thing to happen. In my time working for international oil companies, I have traveled to more than 40 countries in the world working for these companies. There is no country in the world that is allowing the oil companies to do what they are doing in Nigeria. And the government is sitting down, looking at this, and doing nothing about it. And so if, if I want to answer your question in summary, I say the oil companies are flaring gas because the Nigerian government has let them do it. Okay, Mr. Agule, we know that gas flaring has been illegal in Nigeria since the 1980s, yet the country still ranks among the top 10 um, gas flare countries. And I want us to talk about the loss that we've incurred you know, from flaring gas. First of all, the Minister of State for Petroleum, um, Mr. Silver, went ahead to say um, Petroleum Resources said that Nigeria flared about 3 billion cubic metric uh, of, of meters of, of natural gas, and that's just in the first five months of the year 2020, and that this gas that we flared was valued at $230 million. Uh, let me answer your question in two parts. In fact, before I answer your question, let me say that gas flaring is not illegal in Nigeria. I wish it was, but it is not. You mean, not you even mean practically? In the petroleum industry. Sorry? I said you mean practically? Yes, because uh, something is illegal if the government makes a law and says, if you do it, we are going to prosecute you. But what the Nigerian government has done since the discovery of oil in Nigeria is they levy penalties hmm. on the oil companies if they flare gas. And the oil companies have preferred to pay the penalties and flare gas instead of harnessing that gas for electricity generation. So the, the government hasn't declared gas flaring as as illegal. It is a position that I even canvassed when the petroleum industry bill was passed. And I noticed that in the bill, the government has still maintained penalties for gas flaring. In my recommendations, I said the National Assembly needs to, needs to amend the petroleum industry bill, which is an act now, by criminalizing gas flaring. So that if the oil companies flare gas, their executives are held to account and prosecuted for that. And possibly their licenses are withdrawn. Because if you are a father, you cannot watch somebody working for you burning away the, the, the food, uh, burning away food when your children have no food. Nigerians don't have electricity. There are many Nigerians today who work up without electricity in their homes or businesses. And the commodity that generates electricity is being flared away and wasted, and not just that, costing environmental damage. As you can see in the videos that you are showing, you see that flare stack where the gas is flaring. Look at the thick black smoke that is coming from there. 
that is going into the noses of Nigerians. They are taking it into their systems. The environment is being damaged. We are losing money. And we don't have electricity that should kickstart our economy. Oh. Nigeria's economy needs 200,000 megawatts of electricity. And the economy is being given 4,000 megawatts of electricity. Yet, this is a country that is one of the world's topmost producers of gas. In fact, we are a gas nation with some bit of crude oil. So look at that. Just look at that video. Look at that environmental damage. And this thing is happening 24-7 at different sites all over the Niger Delta. Right, so if the government is yes, right, ju just go ahead. Wrap up so I, I, I can um, you know bring in other things. Go ahead. Okay, fine. Okay, so if if the government is interested in solving this problem, <clears throat> it will only require thirty minutes of President Muhammadu Buhari's time. Thirty minutes. If the president invests thirty minutes of his time. And he taxed the Minister of State for Petroleum to summon a meeting of all the oil companies operating in Nigeria in the villa. The president steps into that meeting and he asks the CEOs of these companies the reason for why they are flooding Nigeria's gas when Nigeria does not have electricity, when Nigeria is importing this same gas, importing as far as the United States, the gas that they are flaring. And the president will read the riot act to these oil companies and say, go back. If you produce gas, you must harness it and use it for our economy. If you cannot harness that gas, don't produce. And the oil companies will use their money, they will use their expertise, they will use their technology to harness the gas because they are interested in producing crude oil. All right. so, 30 so, minutes of President Mahmoud Buhari's time will solve gas flaring problem in Nigeria, increase our electricity generation, make cooking gas readily available. In fact, before I even step away from this question, I want to say that in a place like the United Kingdom where I live, gas is not sold in cylinders like you are showing on your screen. Gas is piped directly to every home yeah, and, in and the same that, way to connect electricity and water. That's what I was going to ask uh, next. You know, if Nigeria has the infrastructure to actually uh, produce and you know, make use of its natural gas uh, uh, resources, um, and now that we're talking about a 12-kilogram uh, um, cylinder you know, selling for as high as 6,000 or 7,000 or even more, it's about 500 naira or 550 naira per kilogram currently. Um, what would you expect should be the price of gas in Nigeria if we were truly able to do things better? Uh, uh, thank you very much for that question. Uh, the question is in two parts. So I'll take the infrastructure one. Yes. As we speak today, as we speak today, Nigeria does not have the infrastructure to harness all the gas that is being produced in Nigeria. But that infrastructure can be put in place. That is exactly what we're talking about. If the president invests 30 minutes of his time and reads the riot act, reads the riot act to the oil companies and say, once you produce gas, you either harness it or you don't produce anything at all, it's the oil companies that will put that infrastructure in place. For every oil well, for every flow station, for every terminal, they are going to put the infrastructure in place to harness the gas and use it. And Nigeria will be the better for it. Even if it costs money to do that, it is better we have electricity. This economy that we have is never going to do well unless we give it electricity. Electricity is the life wire of the economy. An economy that needs 200,000 megawatts of electricity being given 4,000, we never do well. It doesn't matter who is the manager. You can bring angels from heaven. They can never move this economy forward because you are trying to take off an aircraft without fuel. Now, having said that, you are saying what should be the ideal cost of cooking gas in Nigeria? I would say that people for, for that 12 and a half cylinder, a kg cylinder that we're talking about, Nigeria should pay as low as 1,000 naira for it. 1,000 naira. We have this commodity, we're flaring it. 
So instead of flaring it, even if you get 1,000 from it, is it not going to be better for you? Hmm. Because when you flare it, you get zero, zero value. Okay. So why not harness it and sell it to Nigerians for cheap? So, M Mr. Agule, um, what then has been the role and what should be the role of the Nigeria Liquefied Natural Gas Company, the NLNG, in all this? Okay, so let me let me take one step back and explain a bit of uh, some, some technicalities in the oil industry. We, we have what we call natural gas and we have what we call petroleum gas. In, in oil industry parlance, we call the natural gas as unassociated gas. Why the petroleum gas is associated gas? Meaning the natural gas is that you actually explore and drill a well to produce gas. It's only gas you are producing. Now, the NLNG was set up by the federal government to actually produce gas and export it. The gas that NLNG is producing is for export. It's only recently they started putting some gas into the domestic market. They were holding for export. So they actually sink gas wells, the oil companies sink gas wells, produce natural gas for them, which they liquefy and export. The petroleum gas is the one that will come with oil. When you sink a crude oil well, and that oil and that well is producing crude oil, gas is going to come with it. That is why it's called associated gas. It's associated with crude oil. And that is the one that you take and liquefy and put into the domestic market as a, a, a liquefied petroleum gas for domestic use. So here we have a country that through the NLNG is exporting gas to places like the UK who are using that gas to generate electricity and pipe it to homes and develop their economies. And the country that is sending this gas to the UK itself does not have gas. It's not importing gas from America, importing gas from Europe. That country does not also have electricity. So UK are using our gas to provide 24-7 electricity. Look, I have lived in the UK for nearly 20 years. Not one day did electricity go. Not even for one second. In my nearly 20 years in the UK, electricity has been constant without a blip. But the country that is sending gas to the UK to provide such electricity to their citizens, it said does not have electricity. Hmm. This is a debacle. What's well, an irony there, Mr. Yeah. Aguilar? Uh, well, it's, uh, it's pretty sad. Uh, there's, um, you know, these are conversations that we've had also with regards to oil um, and, of course, you know, our importation of toothpicks. There's so much, you know, that needs to change with, re you know, with regards to, uh, you know, Nigeria's governance and, you know, what we, uh, sh we should be able to provide for ourselves down here um, instead of importing it. But, you know, it's a continued conversation. Um, Nick Agole, we always enjoy your expertise and uh, your views on some of these very interesting topics. So thank you for joining us this morning and we ha wish you a very interesting Thursday ahead. Thank you very much. Th thank you very much. Nigeria will certainly get better. It's the, it's the best uh, blessed country in the world, but the citizens have to do their bit. 2023 mm. is coming. We have to get the leaders that will do these things for us. Absolutely. Good morning once again.